Hello, hello um, to everyone who's joining us today. My name is Alisa Koppel, and I'm a member of the MBA admissions team here at the Stanford GSB. And again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. We have a, an amazing panel of students and alumni from the Stanford GSB uh, joining us today to talk about uh, their experience at Stanford and how uh, with it kind of an emphasis today on maximizing the location, uh, something that is very unique uh, to the GSB. Uh, with that, I want to just go through the agenda for the next 45 minutes that we're together. Um, I'll give you a brief introduction to kind of why the, the location is special, what uh, one of the unique aspects of the GSB. You'll get a chance to meet our panelists in which I will ask them an opening question and have each of them introduce themselves as they answer that first question too. Um, I have a whole list of questions I can keep asking them, but the purpose of us hosting an event like this is also for you to, to use um, the Q&A to post questions that you'd like our panelists to answer, and I will moderate and hopefully be able to cover um, all the things that you are asking. So again, we're so excited to have everyone here. Um, for those who joined while I was talking, my name is Elisa Koppel. I'm a member of the MBA admissions team here at the Stanford GSB, and I'm joined by a wonderful panel of folks uh, today. Um, like I said, today is really around um, thinking about the GSB in the context of its location. And for the panel that we have today, we'll have um, them answering a lot of questions with the, uh, with the emphasis on you know, what made the location um, a unique aspect of their experience here, whether it was for a career reason, academic reason, or, or all of the above. But as many of you know, and I, I was uh, shouting out a few of the uh, countries that are calling in today that are represented by you guys, um, California is actually the world's fifth largest economy. So when you think about uh, attending a school or, or coming to California, um, obviously it's a dynamic state in which to be uh, within the United States. And specifically um, entrepreneurship and technology is obviously something that is top of mind when people do think about uh, Silicon Valley and the location of Stanford, um, over, whoops, over a third of the unicorns, um, so uh, companies with very high valuation, um, and over half of the hottest startups are within 20 miles of campus. So again, not everyone who does come to the GSB, and we'll have our panelists talk about this, you know, specifically go into technology or entrepreneurship, um, but many do, and there's a reason for that, um, including the proximity of this of the industry um, to the campus. I think many would actually say that there's even a blend between the industry and the campus, given given how close they are. Um, and then also, just you know, if we're going to talk about location, it's not just about Silicon Valley and the industry and technology, but it's really about the Bay Area in general and the fact that the Bay Area is really a gateway to many different things. It's a, a visionary place. I've been thinking about cutting edge um, ideas and the future, but it's also just a wonderful location, right? You're near the ocean, the mountains, um, the wine country. So there's just a lot to take advantage of. So that's another um, aspect for us to think about um, today. So again, we'll keep that emphasis on, on maximizing uh, the location and how our panelists took advantage of that. Here's who we have joining us today. So a big welcome and appreciation to all of them who are on. Um, instead of me introducing each one of them individually with this slide, um, I will keep the slide up so you have this information, but I'm gonna start with um, the first question. And I'll have, usually for the questions, I won't have each one of them answer every question, but for this one, I will, um, so that you guys all have a chance to introduce yourself. So, We'll just go across, so we'll start with Mercedes. But the first question I'd like to ask for all of you is if you could share with us a favorite experience that you had um, during your time at the GSB. So it could be academic, it could be extracurricular, personal, whatever it may be. And maybe think about that with the slant of did, did location play a role in whatever this favorite uh, experience might be. So um, Mercedes, why don't we start with you? Hi everyone, so nice to meet you. My name is Mercedes and I'm an investor at Lightspeed Venture Partners. We're a investment firm or early stage VC where we're investing in startups and kind of the seed series A, series B and beyond. 
I guess all the way, all the alphabet, we do the C, D, E's, F's as well. Um, and my background prior to GSB was I spent half my career in finance and half in working at venture back startups. And in terms of, you know, it's a good question. My favorite um, experience at GSB. I mean, there were so many. I think one of the things I always just think about is the relationships that I got out of the GSB and that being probably my number one. But in terms of um, a specific experience, you know, I, I from a location perspective, I was constantly going to Sand Hill and Sand Hill is very close to, to GSB. It's about, I clocked it from uh, the GSB garage when I would drive in my Jeep to when I would arrive at, you know, a couple of the VCs on Sand Hill was typically about 14 minutes, sometimes, you know, 12, sometimes a little bit longer. And so it was really easy to for me to do a lot of um, networking. And I think that was really great because I actually didn't come into Stanford thinking about VC. Um, so we'll chat more about this later, but that proximity really ended up being a, a large part of my experience. Awesome, thank you. Um, Jason, could you go ahead and introduce yourself as well as uh, share your answer to that question? Sure, uh, thanks for having me. My name's Jason. I am um, originally from St. Louis, Missouri and went to Northwestern for undergrad and then worked at a GSB founded company, um, Bonobos for five years before, before business school. We were one of the first digital brands to, to reach scale and raised a hundred million dollars um, Part of that from Lightspeed, um, where Mercedes works, and uh, I, you know, I came to business school to be able to to reset and get access to a lot of the opportunities I didn't feel like I, I had access to because I graduated in the prior recession in in two thousand nine. Um, I work at a venture capital firm called Forerunner Ventures. We are an early stage firm that's focused on consumer and commerce. So we invest in B2B and B2C, but um, have this lens of, of holding people at the center of everything we do. Uh, my answer is very similar to Mercedes in that as I think about the process of figuring out what I wanted to do and the proximity of being close to where the center of gravity is for venture capital and where the center of gravity is for many of the largest and established firms, um, I actually interned starting in spring of my first year um, through the summer and all the way through my second year at Forerunner where I work. And I would go up there once a week and get to know the team and get to do work. And that just wouldn't have been possible anywhere else to be able to do that. It was a choice I made to leave campus and spend my time that way, but I truly like couldn't think of a better way to be spending time. I knew that I was gonna be joining them full time after my summer and being able to build the relationship with them and then come starting after graduation and feeling, you know, not feeling the new job jitters in many ways and feeling like I had learned a lot um, in that time felt like a really good use of, of my, my time on campus. Awesome, thank you. Um, next we have um, Yasmin, do you wanna introduce yourself and answer the question? Sure, uh, hi everyone, I'm Yasmin. Uh, I was in Jason's class, so it's really good to see him. Um, I am originally from Cairo, Egypt. I grew up in Dubai, and then I lived in London. So I'm I view myself very much as a global citizen. Um, but um, currently, I am a product lead at Pinterest. Um, I hope you're all familiar with Pinterest, but if you're not, it is um, sort of an inspiration company of sorts. But basically, it's a startup. Um, we don't like to use the term unicorn to describe ourselves, but it has been used to describe us. Uh, we IPO'd in 2018, which is the year I graduated from the GSB, and I was actually hired uh, initially to work on the IPO, which I did because I came from a financial background. Um, I spent the six years prior to the GSB working on infrastructure, private equity investing, so I did not have a tech background coming into the GSB, so it was very much a pivot. Um, which brings me to my favorite memory, probably summer uh, between my first and second years was my favorite memory. Um, and the way that location played into that is that I, as I mentioned, um, did infrastructure investing. So what that really meant is I was traveling all across Sub-Saharan and East Africa, um, looking at railroads and refineries and very, very large scale projects. And my internship during the summer was at a self-driving car company called Cruise. Um, so it quite literally was the most opposite thing you could possibly imagine I would do. Um, and I think that the fact that I was in the Bay Area 
at Stanford um, and so close to that hub and that um, that change um, allowed me to optimize uh, and get that kind of a role for my internship. So, and that sort of paved the way for my tech pivot. But yeah, that's it. Thank you, thank you. Wei Wei, um, it is your turn now. You're back. <laughs> yes, I'm back. Thank you guys. Sorry for the technical difficulty there. Um, so my name is Wei Wei. Uh, very nice to be here on this panel. Thank you, um, Elisa, for organizing us. I'm originally from Louisiana, um, so a, a small town um, southern girl at heart. Um, I went to New York to Columbia for uh, undergrad, and then I joined an impact investing fund called Acumen um, after college. Um, I was interested in attending business school, um, particularly at Stanford, because I wanted to get a wider view of business um, beyond um, the impact investing space where I had spent the first seven years of my career. Um, and I wanted to really better understand and hone my definition of the personal impact I wanted to have in the world. Um, I was attracted to Stanford um, specifically and to the Bay Area because um, it just exuded a sense of um, optimism about what was possible in the world and what, you know, um, small teams of people could um, build to create impact. And uh, that's what made me really excited about um, Stanford and the people that I met there. Um, after business school, I um, also made a pivot into the tech sector. I joined a Series A startup um, that ended up not doing so well. Um, we got um, acquired much earlier than we would have liked into Amazon, and that's how um, I am now at Amazon um, working on uh, electric vehicle charging for uh, the delivery vans that um, you likely see in your neighborhood, especially if you're based in the U.S. Um, my favorite a business school memory is um, I was a coach for talk, which is a weekly personal storytelling tradition where um, you get up in front of, you know, 150 or more of your classmates and kind of tell your life story in whatever way you want. Um, coaching was a huge privilege of my time during GSB and um, my most memorable um, moment at GSB was watching my first uh, coachee give his talk um, and just the amount of pride uh, that he felt at the end of that. Um, you could see it kind of on his face and the whole class, um, you know, felt more connected to him too in that moment. And uh, it, it was just a, a magical, um, magical moment for me. So that's my favorite GSB memory. Awesome, thanks for sharing. Um, next, we have Dan, um, you wanna introduce yourself and share your favorite memory or experience. Sure, thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Dan. Uh, really excited to be with all of you at the start of your MBA journey. Um, I'm actually a reapplicant, so I've been through your shoes not once but twice. And if any of you have reapplicant questions, I'm always happy to take those. Um, I, I grew up in Toronto, Canada. I went to college at a place called Queen's University, a couple hours east of Toronto. Um, and my first job out of college was in consulting at Bain, where about a third of our class will work in some kind of consulting gig um, in their pre-business school careers. Um, that's originally where I got the idea for business school. I saw wave after wave of people come back from business school with this twinkle in their eye, describing it as the best two years of their life less so for professional reasons, more so personally, all the wonderful people you'll meet and spend time with, and to Mercedes's point, the, the relationships that will last a lifetime. Um, so I got the idea uh, while in consulting. Uh, I, I was a couple years consulting, and then uh, three years actually at the NBA, the Basketball League, and some of the memorabilia here, um, where I helped launch a professional video game league. Um, and that ignited a startup desire, uh, which I kept chasing uh, when I got into Stanford, when I applied for the second time. Uh, and my, my favorite memory from business school is actually trying to start a business of my own. Uh, I would not have been able to raise venture capital had our investors not been a stone's throw away. 
um, I actually uh, got some advice from Mercedes uh, when we had lunch in town square, uh, what felt like uh, not too long ago, um, who helped me raise some of my initial round. Um, while that business didn't survive the pandemic, I'm using a lot of what I learned uh, running that business for two years doing business school uh, at DoorDash, uh, where I'm now a GM uh, running a, a fairly big team, launching uh, one of its new business lines here in California and Nevada. Awesome, thank you. And um, Austin, you're up next. Please introduce yourself and share your, your favorite memory or experience so far. <laughs> uh, thanks, Elisa. So um, I'm Austin. I graduated from the GSB a full three weeks ago. So I have a very fresh perspective to bring. Um, thank you, Dan. I, uh, before the GSB, I started out in consulting and then worked for a large family philanthropy. And across all of that, I was very focused on healthcare um, and life sciences, and that's still what I'm doing today. So I'm currently in my second internship at um, an early stage deep tech VC firm called Playground Global, which is quite close to campus in Palo Alto. And it um, and invest across sectors, but life sciences is one of them, and that's where I've been spending my time. I'm actually also doing a uh, concurrent degree with the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, and that's kind of a cool program that where Harvard and Stanford have agreed to structure it so that um, I can complete uh, both of the two-year degrees in three years total. So I've, I'm all done with the GSB part, and I have one more year to finish at HKS, uh, which will happen this fall. And I think one of my favorite memories um, from the GSP experience that ties into the location is that both years I was a part of the GSP Impact Fund, which is a student-led um, evergreen impact investing organization that's been around for several years now, I think four or five. Um, and it was really my first exposure to uh, venture investing where it's a student-led group, but we're investing real money in companies across sectors. And so I had the chance to continue with um, a lot of my healthcare work um, as a member of the team first year and then as a leader second year. Um, and there's a lot to say about that. But one thing that really benefited from the location was that um, you know, many people in the fund were interested in impact investing careers. And so it was very easy to organize treks and get to know um, other investors in the area. I think one other thing that I'll just toss in is that um, the weather in around Stanford is very good. And this was a that gave a surprising benefit during COVID because at times we were still able to like gather safely in, in small groups outside um, more or less year round. And I think that actually made a big difference in terms of, um, you know, having still having a very like good and, and meaningful uh, business school experience despite the pandemic. Um, so it was definitely a, a silver lining to the whole experience. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for your intros and for sharing your favorite experience. I'm going to jump into some questions, and I'm going to actually pull one that I saw. Um, you all have the chance, just again, for those who are on the call, to upvote. So if you see someone ask a question and you're interested in it, you can like it underneath, and then we'll know that that is a highly popular one to at, answer. So I want to uh, tee up a question from Marco just about how often do the GSB class projects give you exposure with kind of the surrounding area? So that could be um, in your coursework, was there a project that kind of required that you interact with companies or the industry around or the opposite way, did the industry kind of come into your class, um, whether it be taught by someone or guest speaker? So I'm gonna ask, um, for maybe Yasmin to answer this first. And then if any other, uh, if you'd like to chime in, please do. If there's someone who specifically has a something you wanna share with us. Sure, I can take a stab. Um, I think it does, it very much depends on what classes you choose to take while you're at the GSV. Um, so I have an interest in healthcare. I took, a, I took a lot of what we call across the street classes at the medical school. And so I ended up spending a lot of time at the Stanford hospital and multiple other hospitals in the area. Um, in terms of industry coming into classes, I also took a lot of classes about um, just like startups and starting new companies. So there's a class specifically that I took called um, formation of new ventures. And the whole premise behind the class is every class you have a case. Um, and typically the case protagonists are also the guest speakers that come to that class. And so we had everyone from people who started search funds to folks who started uh, companies. We had the founders of DoorDash come in, it, just 
everything that you might imagine in terms of, um, um, I guess, like industry from that lens came in. Um, so I think generally guest speakers are to be expected in most of our classes. We had the founders of Bonobos come in in a class called um, Managing Difficult Conversations. And so industry lends itself a lot to what we learn at the GSB in very different ways. It's not always about um, teaching you about the industry itself, but perhaps the story behind the founders or the companies. And that's very much like, I think, a tenant of how um, classes are taught at the GSB, um, but also across Stanford widely. Great, thanks. Um, is there anyone else who wants to chime in specifically on kind of um, the industry coming into a class you took or a project you were involved in that required your interaction with the surrounding area? make sure you all have a chance. I did something. I also did impact uh, fund at Stanford and there uh, we have in our groups as on the education team, we had education VCs that were local in the area come meet with us in person and kind of help guide our um, perspective on what the memos we were putting forward. So that was very useful for me. And then also um, I took the entrepreneurship and VC class and a ton of different entrepreneurs and VCs came through. The founder of Snapchat came through, probably the most exciting one, um, but there were a bunch of really interesting people coming. That's awesome, great. Um, there's a question that got upvoted quite a bit uh, just regarding summer internships. That's specifically the question. How did the GSB location help you find your summer internship opportunity? Um, but I want to expand that a little bit more and ask a few of you to answer um, just, you know, what were the career resources like for you at the GSB and for a few of you or for actually quite a bit of you, there was a pivot in terms of changing the industry you were in. So what specific resources were available to help guide you through that, not just um, for your summer internship? So um, Jason, why don't we have you answer that first? Sure. I got to know the CMC, um, two people there, Grace um, uh, and um, Tom, sorry, Tom Sable, um, pretty early on as I was thinking about what I wanted to do. And they were tremendous resources for me because the thing that they had visibility into that I did not is the pattern of what had come, you know, what students had done before and, and what success looked like and, and what I should be thinking about. I talked to Tom a lot about negotiating, you know, what my compensation would look like coming out. And so he has a lot of those data points, which are harder to come by when you're just asking around um, to individual classmates and things that people may be less comfortable sharing with you. I still keep in touch with, with both of them. Um, pivots, you know, a lot of, or, or doing something different coming out, a lot of people end up doing it. It, it. I think it ends up being a little bit harder than people expect when they come. Like you do actually have to show up and put, have intention and put a lot of effort and work into it because, you know, there's a lot of other people, if you're thinking about venture capital in particular that want to do that too. So thinking about how you stand out and how you craft your narrative. And there are, tremendous resources on campus beyond even what I tapped into. And it's more about you kind of raising your hand, sharing what you're looking for and what you want, and then getting pointed into the right direction of how you can get the most out of what GSB has to offer. Um, and there are entry points into doing that, but I always encourage people to think about, okay, what is it that I wanna do? How can I make that be known so that I can get in touch with the people that can help me the most get there? Um, and I think a lot of people will get caught in not raising their hand and kind of trying to navigate things on your own. And that can go a long way, I found with myself and then some other people that have chosen that path too. Great, thanks. Um, Wei Wei, would you wanna chime in also? I don't know if the CMC played a big role for you in your job search, but what were the career resources and support like both from a summer internship perspective, but overall? Yeah, um, I will echo Jason and say uh, the Career Management Center, um, specifically Grace, uh, was just a wonderful coach. Um, so I think what was most helpful about the Career Management Center is not so much that they help you set up interviews um, or anything, because you know you still have to do that work yourself, um, but that they help you 
really design and ask hard questions about, you know, how do I want to spend my time this summer? What hypotheses do I want to test about my future career? Um, and that helps you kind of narrow down the field to these are the types of places that I should actually focus um, my time in terms of putting in applications. Um, I ended up interning at Airbnb um, in their China and India team over the summer. And that was really helpful for me when I was looking at more technology oriented jobs after as being sort of a stepping stone to um, having at least some exposure to tech, even though it was only three months of time. Um, it gave me a little bit more credibility as I was talking to other uh, tech companies as potential employers after school. Awesome, thank you. Um, there have been uh, specifically some questions directed towards Dan and it ties into the idea of pivoting and career resources, but specifically as someone who was in consulting at one of the larger firms, um, you know, what, what kind of helped you think about the career change? How did Stanford play a role in defining the path that you took once you were at Stanford? Totally. Um, I, uh, I always try and speak in basketball metaphors when I can. Uh, so in this case, it applies. Um, Grace, actually, you'll hear a lot of Grace's name because she's such a legend now. Um, Grace really told me like a pivot is about keeping one foot on the ground, keeping like something stable and only changing one thing around that. So for me, it was um, the, the three things were like geography, industry and role. And Grace really helped me find like, you have to probably keep two of those things the same. You, you probably only get to change one of those things. Maybe you get to change two, How like probably depends on the economic cycle. So for me, um, I, I was consulting a couple of years. I was like a strategy kind of ops guy at the NBA, jack of all trades. Um, so coming out of those experiences and then working on my own startup, I, I knew I wasn't gonna change geo. I was still gonna be here in the States. Um, I was probably going to change industry away from traditional sports. So that meant role probably had to stay pretty similar to kind of strategy and ops. It would be very hard for me to try and change geo and go work in product at a DevOps, like high growth B2B startup, too many changes. So um, with that, like kind of pivot uh, mentality, I, I, I stayed true to the States. I stayed true to strategy and ops, and I, I instead moved a little bit away from kind of traditional sports into what I think of as like consumer tech, um, specifically interested in marketplace businesses, um, operational heavy ones, uh, and, and that's obviously where I'm at now with, with DoorDash. Great, thank you. Um, I, it's funny, with the upvoting, the questions are getting lost as I choose which one to answer next. But um, I, there was one that I saw specifically around, you know, we're talking a lot right now about the positives of the um, location and the valley and how it may have helped you in your career or in your academics. Um, but do you feel like um, for any of you before coming or even during, were there any stereotypes that did play out in the Valley? Any downsides do you see of being in the Valley that, um, you know, maybe not hurt you or hindered you, but just what, is there kind of a, another side to it in, in addition to it just being positive? So I wanna, I think for a lot of people on the call today, you know, there's stereotypes around the Valley. So did any of that play out for you while here? And, and you know, how did you, kind of learn to, to maneuver in Silicon Valley and take advantage of the location. So um, Mercedes, why don't we have you start with that? There's definitely things that I'd say are very true and are downsides of the Bay Area. I mean, one is the cost of living. It's just expensive. I mean, rent for, you know, monthly rent if you're coming from somewhere inexpensive, it's going to seem astronomical. Like it's, it's, it's Stanford does a little bit of subsidizing, but it's still very high for your first year. And then second year you're off campus. So you're, you know, at market rates. Um, so that's can be a tough pill to swallow. And then I think the second thing is, you know, it is a tech centric culture and startup world. And if that's what you want, which is what I wanted, it's amazing. But if you have other interests, it can be 
um, you know, a bit annoying at times to be like, okay, this is what people there's are always talking about. And there's constant, you know, um, kind of refrains in, in class and just the yeah, folks you yeah. meet. So I think it's similar to if you're in LA, there's going to be a lot of talk about entertainment in Hollywood. If you're in certain projects of New York, there's going to be a lot of talk about finance. So that is definitely very true here. There are a lot of Silicon Valley HBO show like moments that you will hear about. Is there anyone else on the panel who wants to chime in? on that? I guess I could go. Um, I think I agree with Mercedes point. So I came from infrastructure investing in sub-Saharan Africa. And like I, when I landed here, um, I felt like I had been disrupted and I didn't even realize it. Like everyone around me had worked in tech um, or had started a company and failed and started another one or sold a company or like people had just done all these like really remarkable things with their lives. Um, and I just felt like I was sort of stuck in like my parents' industries. Um, and so that was a little overwhelming. I will say um, that initially when I first started, I didn't know that I was going to recruit into tech and I actually recruited into private equity, like back into private equity. Um, to Dan's earlier point, I was trying to optimize for not changing both my geo and my role and my industry all at once. Um, and it was actually not that bad. Um, I will say it's not for every one bank or firm, I'm excluding VC because VC is very much a thing here, but I'm talking like big, like funds, private equity funds. Um, for every like one, there were maybe 10 startups. Sure. So the ratios are kind of like different than if you're based in the East coast. Um, but I will say there were a lot less people trying to go after those roles. And so I like, it wasn't as hard to stand out. Um, and it was actually rare. Um, and probably the, the way I was able to get my internship is um, there were few people in our class who had done so much investing. Um, and so selling myself to um, a startup or a smaller company and say like, hey, I've worked on 20 IPOs. I can probably be on your finance team was a much easier sell, right? Um, than if I was, for example, on the East Coast and competing with all these people who've worked like many, many years on Wall Street. And so I like blend in the masses. So I think there's like pros and cons to everything. Um, I definitely like was curious if tech was, if I had like missed the tech boat because I didn't know much about it when I came. Um, but I also think like if you really embrace how different you are or perhaps lean into this, the like anti-stereotype, you might, find yourself in a spot that's pretty interesting. Great. Anyone else on the panel who wants to chime in on that one? Um, if not, I, there's a question out there. It is the most popular question so far, so it got up the most that I'd like to make sure we address. I've just, um, do, you know, what do you wish someone had told you before coming to Stanford? Um, and perhaps it's advice that would have helped you during your time here. Um, or even maybe advice that you wish you had been given when going through the application process, because I do wanna acknowledge, I see a lot of questions out there around the application. This panel today is really around the experience of our panelists um, during their time here. So I will try right at the end to address some of the application questions, but we're not gonna focus too much on those right now. So in terms of just advice, I would love to do a round table with all of you, I think on this, unless um, you wanna pass, you feel free to, but. Um, you know, what advice do you wish someone had given you prior to stepping onto the GSB campus? And I'm going to open it up to also any advice you wish you had been given during the application process, if, if you want to share that too. Um, so why don't we start with Austin, since you most recently went through this? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think one of the perennial pieces of advice is just to have a good sense of what you want to get out of the experience and then therefore to protect your time. Um, People will say that it can be overwhelming, which I think is what one of the words that someone used in the Q&A with just how many opportunities there are. And that's very much true. And as you keep going, you will find new things. And that's that's such a you know privilege and a great opportunity. But if you're not careful, you can find yourself being drawn in lots of directions that aren't actually um, as relevant to what your, your goals really are. And so literally writing down, you know, your top like three to five priorities from the experience and trying to um, check yourself every so often that you're spending your time correctly to that. I think it's really helpful. Um, another piece of advice I think that I, I, that is just good, kind of related to that is um, 
or is more about like thinking of the the lifespan of your GSB experience. I think in general, um, or in my experience, you know, in the first year, um, you're meeting, you're getting to meet everyone. You're kind of like reacclimating to being a student. You're learning about all these opportunities, and then in your second year, I think it's a it's a place where you've had a chance to explore a lot, and you can start to refine and concentrate. And so. I think having a giving yourself the right expectation of okay maybe earlier on I'm going to let myself um, you know just explore and focus on meeting people but then in my second year I'm going to choose to spend time in these ways like recognizing that the um, the overall kind of rhythm of the place changes over time can be helpful too. Great, um, Dan. Do you want to go next? We'll just go backwards in terms of class year. <laughs> Sure. I, I was thinking, is it worth changing my answer? But I always give the same one for this. And it's Austin's, which is know what you want out of the experience. Um, I found myself six weeks in feeling quite lost. And I actually called the person who wrote one of my letters. And and they gave me this piece of advice, knowing that I, I cook quite a bit, saying, like, it's like you're going to a, a grocery store. And you have to know what you want to make for dinner. You have to have an ingredient list. Because if you go to the store hungry, you're going to wander through the aisles and get eight things and get home and, and not have anything to make a meal. And I went through the first six weeks and fortunately it was only six weeks just wandering through the aisles and, uh, and getting a bunch of things and I, and I got nauseous. Uh, so at that point, I kind of I sat down and I said, what are my three big rocks? Um, and that gave me permission to also deprioritize things that weren't my three big rocks. Uh, so, you know, plus one to Austin's point on, on knowing your priorities and then giving yourself permission to, to potentially take other things less seriously. Mercedes, do you have anything to add to, to that? Anything different? No, I mean, I think that prioritization thing is so important. I also think of it in terms of, you know, school was super overwhelming. My calendar was way more filled up than it is even today. And I think it's very filled up today in VC world. Um, it's the, I think the thing is like, you can pick kind of, you know, and I thought about this in college too, but you can pick a couple of priorities across social academics, career, and then sleep might be the next one. Um, and so I really thought about, you know, career was first for me and social was second, then, you know, the others were after that. And so that's how I kind of, um, prioritized, but I constantly read thought when I was going through my calendar, is this what I want to do? And if it wasn't, then I tried to realign. Great. Thanks. Jason, do you want to chime in? Jason and Yasmin are the same year and Yasmin already said a lot. So why don't we have Jason sure. and then Yasmin give advice? I challenged myself to think about what, what do I need to accomplish? If you reframe this from being beyond a two-year experience and thinking about being part of a community ongoing, you know, for the rest of your career, for the rest of your life, um, what do you need to accomplish in the two years that you're on campus and what can you do after? And, you know, there's a lot of power to having an EDU email address as you're going out and meeting people and you're, you're non-threatening, even though they through the veil, they know that you're looking for a job, but you can go, you can be ambitious and bold and get in touch with a lot of people that are in the GSB network or outside of it. And so there's some things that I felt like were really important to get done while on campus. And there's other things that I felt like I can do that after. And some of them are like, like, for example, Mercedes and I didn't really know each other. We weren't in the same year, but we overlapped for a year. Like we just got coffee last week. There's a couple of other people that are in the venture community that I've gotten. There's my closest friends now that I wasn't in touch with at all during school. And if I would have spent time trying to get to know them as much as I know them now, I would have been pulled in way too many directions. And so there's, to me, there's a natural um, way to separate kind of what you need to do while you're there and what you can do after that helps to give some breathing room. And I think a sign of like a sigh of relief <laughs> that you don't have to emphasize everything in two years. I guess as far as like, app, if we want to add one idea on like the application part of it, which is, is truly like, it's a whole package about who you are. And I think there's a lot of emphasis around, especially with Stanford's question, which has been around for so long of like, who are you? Like, that is truly what they, what people, you, the story that you should tell, like you should stay true to yourself. And um, like that my essay wasn't like a bunch of prose that was beautiful, that would be published. Like it was just me talking about me and my experience. And like, that may have been the, 
that may have come across as like the strongest point in my application or the weakest point, I don't know, but there was all of these other pieces that fit together to tell the story of who I am and being really thoughtful and strategic about, well, this person can talk about this part of me and this person can talk about this part of me and they connect in this way. And you can go the lengths to do that. You don't have to, that's how I approached it. Cause I, I wanted to really just round out and, you know, really illustrate who I, who I am. That's, that's great advice. Thank you, Jason. I'm Yasmin. I remembered one more piece of advice uh, or thing I wish I had done. It was, I really wished I had researched the second year classes and electives more because I, I mean, I didn't do, I didn't do it. And I kind of would look at the, when you, the time opened and I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. This sounds interesting. And then later on, as the classes were going, I would hear how cool other people's classes were and they aren't offered like all three quarters. And so I would realize, wow, I just missed out on like the Tyra Banks class. I had no idea that was a class at Stanford. So definitely sometime in your first year, start talking to second years about like, what were their coolest favorite classes? That's a great piece of advice. Thanks, Mercedes. <clears throat> and yeah, for those who are on this call, um, Mercedes mentioned there are classes that are um, co-taught sometimes or taught by um, guest uh, lecturers and Tyra Banks. Um, is often uh, has come back to do this class more than once um, where she uh, teaches. So, um, okay, uh, Yasmin, why don't you chime in on this one and then we'll get to Weiwei. I mean, I think Jason said it really well. For me, it was um, just distinguishing really between stuff that I could only do in these two years versus like stuff I could tackle at any point in my life. Uh, so I, for me, it was like, I have to experience the design school because like I can only do that when I'm on campus. I need to experience the med school um, because I can only do that. I'm not a doctor. I can only do that if I'm on campus. And so I use that as my general rule of thumb. Um, and I, it also, I think, caused me to remember that having 400 of these like incredibly like intelligent, accomplished, but also very kind and generous people in your vicinity and like your very direct radius is probably not something you're going to experience again in your life. And so I spent a lot of time just like getting to know people um, and not necessarily asking them what they did before school or what they're planning to do after school, but like actually getting to know them as human beings. Um, and I, and just like learning about their interests and what they do and stuff like that, I think has just, it has completely opened up my eyes to lives that are very different than mine. Um, and as an international student, like that was just very crucial to my experience. And I think it's it gets harder as you exit the GSV. Um, yeah, that EDU email, like it, there's nothing else like it. Um, the example I give is like, I used to get a response within an hour from my student email, from my alumni email, uh, maybe a couple of days. Um, so like it changes. Uh, so it's just like really, really, really do the things what, when you're on campus that you can only do on campus. That's awesome. And Wei Wei, um, any advice? My um, advice is kind of trite, but I think it actually speaks to like the broader theme here. So um, I spent probably three weeks before um, first year of school studying really hard for the data and decisions um, placement exam, which I failed. <laughs> and so uh, I, I think it goes to the whole, like, what do you want out of the experience? It didn't actually matter to me at the end of the day that I got into a more like advanced um, data and decisions class versus like a less advanced one. Um, and I don't think I really thought through that at the time. Um, and so I ended up doing that instead of like using that precious time in between working and Stanford to like spend time with family and friends, um, which looking back, you know, I, I really wish I had maximized that instead of like pouring over um, an old statistics textbook to try and place into an advanced class. Um, and yeah, everybody I talk about that with my friends from GSV just thinks it's like ridiculous that I would have um, tried so hard in that. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think small things like that, that's where it is really important to, um, to be cautious with how you're spending your time and not feel FOMO 
around things like, um, you know, not being in advanced classes for every single um, subject or not being in, um, you know, the, the exact like study trip that you wanted to do. Um, so much of life is just about letting go of the FOMO. So I think GSB really tests that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, because we are focused on location today um, and we have um, Mercedes and Jason joining us working in VC, there are um, there are a few people who wanted to ask a question around just how, for someone who is in VC now, um, were you considering kind of VC versus startup versus even a search fund? And if you weren't thinking about those three, just how would you structure your career choices um, you know, when thinking, I guess, about entrepreneurship broadly um, while at the GSB. Um, so why don't we start with Jason um, in that sense? Sure. Um, for me, I wasn't set on venture. Um, I had a good experience working at Forerunner and, and liked the people and liked the work that we do and, and ended up deciding to stay. The the way that I evaluated the opportunity was thinking about how can I open more doors than I'm closing? I came from a background of working at Bonobos, being in a marketing role. I felt if I worked at another digital brand, even a different department or went and worked in anything related to marketing again, that was a path that I was gonna be set on and it was gonna be hard to move away from that. Um, and so this, was for me, as I think about venture, like I'm committed to the role that I'm in and being at Forerunner, um, you know, if I end up taking a different direction, I could work at a different firm that specializes in something else, whether it be a different category or a different uh, stage of investing, I could probably have a pretty good shot at raising money and starting something on my own or joining a portfolio company and working in a different role. So for me, it was about that optionality um, because when I started Forerunner, I didn't know that I was going to like it as much as I like it. You know, and there's the stat that a lot of people change their job after a year. So I really thought about um, how do I open open these doors, uh, and that really comes back from this point of like graduating during a recession and feeling like a lot of the opportunities that were available to other people a couple years younger and older weren't weren't there for me. Um, Mercedes, you know, when thinking about VC, um, which I know you shared earlier, wasn't kind of your intention, I think, when coming, but were you, as you kind of think about VC and, and you know, that's the investment side of startups, how did you weigh that versus say, going back to entrepreneurship and a startup uh, company or um, the specific question also throughout the search funds, um, which I don't think, you know, if, if that's not relevant, you can share that too. Sure, yeah, I didn't consider search funds um, you know, when I came into GSB, I had been working at venture back startups for the five years prior, and I'd worked in finance for a bit before that. I had, um, you know, thought I was just going to continue to work at startups and continue to be, you know, uh, my goal was to be a CEO of a, or COO of a startup. And I wasn't thinking of founding a company. So it would be like, would be more of a work your way up and not necessarily CEO of a startup that was recently started since that might be hard to um, to do that. But I think that, you know, for me, I realized once I was at Stanford that venture was, you know, to, to Jason's point about opening doors and closing doors, venture was a door that is not open nearly as often as the startup door is open. And given I already had that experience, it felt like it would be one that I should try. And two, uh, another person said something about, you know, wanting to limit the number of things you're changing altogether in terms of a full career pivot all the way over, um, you know, on geography, role, sector, all of those things can be difficult. So since I had worked at education startups or ed tech startups, I decided to first start with ed tech VC. And I actually think that was a really great decision because it allowed me to go so much deeper in understanding what a VC does, because I just knew the sector and the domain topic so well. And so the impact fund, and then I'd worked with uh, Al Ventures at Tech BC over my summer. And then I kind of realized, okay, I think I know pretty well what VC is because I went pretty deep on several deals they did during that summer um, and then kind of made my decision from there. I mean, I think to me, search funds, starting your own company and 
VC are all very different. VC is a service provider to the startup world. You are sitting on the outside watching people, you know, start companies. And yes, you're on the board. And so you help a little bit, but it's night and day in terms of what it's like to be inside of a startup in terms of the pace that you're working at, the all-consuming nature of the sector and what you, you know, in terms of even just work life, not necessarily work-life balance, but the highs are much higher and the lows are much lower in operating than it is in BC because BC, you are that one step removed. And so to be a founder, for me, that was a risk level that was frankly just a little bit too high given how much I've already paid for business school and how much I, how many student loans I took out to also go do that. I know some of my friends have done both, but I wasn't quite ready for that, that risk appetite. And then the search fund model to me, you know, I love high you know, high paced, fast startups and search funds are after often going after business targets that are not like Silicon Valley startups. They're much more, they're a very different type of business. And so to me, I didn't think I would enjoy not only the search process itself. I mean, you're finding a company to buy that's financial engineering, but then two, also the, the, you know, you're buying a company that is not a startup. And so to me, it just wasn't really a, a consideration. Thank you. Yeah. I can at least I can just add to that briefly with a, yeah. a quick tie into the location in CMC because I, I I also ended up working in venture without necessarily coming in with a super specific goal of doing that and I think one of the things that a lot of people including me think of a VC if they don't have exposure to it is that firms are very similar they all kind of work in the same way and it's and, and it's kind of monolithic but in fact it's one of the most kind of unstructured and sort of chaotic industries firms are coming and going all the time you can't learn that much from a firm's website um and that's where the proximity to the firms um, that stanford has and the kind of institutional knowledge that folks at the cmc have um, i also worked a lot with tom sable who's amazing and when i first went to him i didn't really even know the difference between early stage and late stage in practical terms and he could just kind of sketch out look this is how the whole ecosystem works these are the things you can think about. And through that, I was able to just learn from experiences that other that classmates had had, either as investors there or um, you know, having worked at a company that, that the firm had invested in and realized that there are many, many ways that you can do VC and you can find a place that has kind of a cultural fit for you that might, you might not have expected. Um, and so I think that's where the, the location and the CMC can really help. Great, thank you, Austin. Um, we only have about two more minutes and I do want to kind of merge a few questions into one and I'm gonna direct this to Dan. Um, there are some questions around kind of advice being a reapplicant. I'm gonna just broadly state that. And then there's also specifically just um, any advice you may have on like kind of how you dove deeply into the answering the essays. And um, you don't have to share your topic and um, that is one of the questions out there. We're not gonna share the topic because then you all who are on this call will feel like that's the topic you should choose. Um, and that's not, but Dan, if you could just share maybe the level of introspection that was required both in being a reapp, but also in um, thinking through the essay. This will be our final question. Totally. Um, so uh, first time I applied uh, round two in 2016, second time I applied round one, 2017. There's only so many things you can change in six months. Um, Disclaimer, a lot of this has randomness built in. So it, it's important to kind of level set your expectations. They're just in, incredibly competitive seats. Um, the shortest answer I can give you is it was a total overhaul. Um, only upon reflection can I tell you um, what was different. Um, and Chris Rock has the perfect joke, which totally sums up the difference between my applications. He jokes um, and says, when you go on a first date with someone, you're not going on a date with them. You're going on a date with their best representative. These people wear like your best clothes. They tell your best stories. These people are on their best behavior. Um, and, and the first time I applied, I sent my best representative. And I, and I tried to gloss it up and be the perfect applicant who made every community he was in better for it. Um, but Chris Rock goes on to say, you know, over time you really get to meet the real representative, the person behind the best who has flaws and fears and it's a much more interesting rich experience as the real representative so my second time around i sent my real representative uh, for better or for worse there was no disney story there were flaws there were fears 
Um, and again, impossible to delineate the randomness from the applications, but I can barely reread my first application without cringing. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm proud to have my second application up on the wall here. So um, if nothing else, I would tell you, send your real representative on the application because you'll be proud of it. That's, that's great advice. And I'll just chime in as the admissions representative here that Dan doesn't know what one thing or two things or think, you know, helped him or, or didn't help him, um, you know, possibly. So, um, so, but that is just great advice about being authentic and kind of um, putting your real self forward as, as you dive in. So hopefully um, everyone on this call found uh, the questions and answers uh, helpful and interesting as you're on your journey towards applying to the Stanford GSB. I want to thank again, all of our panelists. You guys were amazing. I thank you for your time and for your answers um, regarding the, your experience at the GSB and specifically with the focus on location today. Um, there were some other questions around admissions. I encourage those on the call to sign up for other events, including our information session, which is largely admissions focused. Um, and we have many, many other events throughout the summer um, that you can sign up for other panels um, and events uh, with different topics, whether it be industry, uh, geographies. So, um, take a look on our website. And again, I just want to thank everyone um, for their time. And please uh, feel free to fill out the poll that we posted and um, have a good rest of your day. There was everyone from around the world. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you again for joining us today. Thanks, everyone.